Good morning, Chief Collins. Thank you so morning, much for Darren. being here today. Um, we are very excited to have you here. Um, so first question we'll start out with is um, just love to learn a little bit more about what yourself, yourself and what you do. Sure. Good morning, UNT Eagle community. It's great to have you uh, and be a part of your presentation here. My name is Chief Scott Collins. I'm with the Argyle ISD Police Department. I've been the police chief for the past uh, two months here in Argyle, but previously I served in Aubrey ISD as a police chief for just under eight years. Been a master peace officer and serving uh, as a police officer for 20 years, certified in fire and uh, fire and EMS also in emergency management. And I recently just completed my advanced uh, stadium sports management certification. So I'm excited to be a part of the uh, UNT career path here. Very cool. That's really neat. How long have you been um, in this area? I moved back to uh, Aubrey in 2014 and uh, started serving as a police chief here. And prior to that, I graduated from Louisville in 1996. Okay, that's awesome. So you are a Texan, a DFW native, sounds like. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So could you tell me a little bit more about your career path and how um, you ended up where you are today? So my career path was uh, a little bit of, of a uh, structured road for me. I knew what I wanted to do when I was young. I always wanted to be a police officer. However, I did not know I would make police chief being so young and everything else. So a little bit about my, my career path. When I was in the senior year in high school, I was attending North Central Texas College while I was in high school and obtained my jailer certification, my 9-1 dispatcher certification, and my EMT basic certification, along with about 20 hours of college credit. So as soon as I walked out of college, or from high school, I already had college credit, and I went to Sam Houston State University, which was the number two in the, in the nation, and the number one in the state of Texas for criminal justice. I spent five years over there, and uh, was, had a great experience in college, loved the college atmosphere, learned a lot from Sam Houston State. I worked in the Texas Department of Corrections as a prison medic and gained some real life experience along uh, with getting my peace officer certification my senior year in college. After that, I, uh, I, I decided to continue with my fire EMS certifications along with my police certifications and have been working hard ever since. It's taken me around the world doing various tasks in fire, police and EMS services. That's amazing. Uh, that is, yeah, a wonderful journey. Um, definitely, yeah, you started all that training really, really early. So that's really awesome. You were able to do that through your high school yeah. and then through college. All right. So you talked about this just now, um, but anything else you want to add to sort of the education training and background um, the year role as chief requires? Sure. I can't express to the, the people in your program, how important it is to obtain your college degrees and, and obtain training and everything else. One of the things that people do not understand lately is that training never stops. A personal, a personal note right now, 20 years later, after I obtained my, my bachelor's degree, I met the University of San Diego online to fulfill my master's degree. And uh, I'll graduate in December of 2022 and uh, it's been a long two-year journey but learning never stops you have to always push yourself to that next level to go be the best you, you can be so in my career path i've attended the national command and staff leadership college which is out of south carolina i've attended the uh, lepsel program which is law enforcement public safety leadership program out of the university of san diego the fbi trilogy program and uh, various other leadership and, and police, fire, and EMS classes. So you can never stop learning. Always obtain your goals. If you have a goal, don't stop until you go get it. That's one thing I would keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, I became a chief at a very young age. Uh, most, most chiefs don't make until they're in their late 40s or early 50s. And I, I became a chief at late, late to middle 30s. Um, and it's, it's because of that leadership path. So... Don't ever stop. Uh, find the true passion that you want to do. Once you become a specialist at something, keep pushing forward and, and learn everything you can about that path and embrace it and own it. That is wonderful advice. I really love that. Yeah. Never stop learning. Um, you don't just finish college and just stop learning. That's 
um, the not the way to excel in life. So very wonderful advice. So do most people, um, is criminal justice a common major, um, you know, to pursue, you know, a career um, to become a chief someday, or are there other majors that um, are common as well? So I always thought that, you know, in my path, the criminal justice is what I really wanted to do, because I always wanted to be a police officer full time. To be tra fully transparent, I always wanted to be an ESU officer from NYPD, which was from the show True Blue. Um, they were cross-trained police, fire, EMS, and that was my dream job when I was a kid, and I always worked hard to go get that. However, many agencies don't have the cross-trained agency uh, specific brand. A matter of fact, in Texas, there's only seven or eight of them left that were there. So with that, um, criminal justice was the best uh, option for me. My original goal was to get my master's degree in emergency management. And uh, working in emergency management, that was going to be my retirement job. However, in school safety, 90% of what I do is emergency management. How to plan for incidents like active shooters, gas leaks, uh, stadium management for crowds, things of that nature. So um, did I plan for emergency management to be a full-time gig? No. Do I, do I need it? Yes. Hindsight 2020, I wish I would have got my uh, a second degree in emergency management to, uh, to fulfill that. But hindsight's 2020. Yeah. So what are some common entry-level jobs um, in this field? So entry-level jobs for law enforcement right now is wide open. There's anywhere from patrol work, there's, there's school resource officers, there is deputy sheriffs, there's prison guards, there's all sorts of wide variety of public safety, public sector stuff. There's also a lot of private sector for security jobs and things of that nature. So you're, you're not limited on anything. One thing that people don't understand is law enforcement is a recession-proof job. So during COVID, while a lot of people lost their jobs because the, the system shut down, unfortunately, crime was still being committed and we never lost our jobs or things like that. So it's a recession-proof job. That's a very good point. Um, very important. So... So what does a typical day look like for you? I know this week's been crazy, um, but it probably looks different every day, but uh, i just get a little insight on that. Sure. Uh, well, we are broadcasting right now in the summer months of uh, 2022, and we have just started our summer schedule. So my last contracted day technically was Tuesday. So as a uh, school district employee, I get to have a month long vacation. So uh, it's kind of nice to recharge the batteries on that. So, but what a typical day looks like for us is I start my shift about 6.30 in the morning, do my early morning rounds of patrol, making sure our buildings are safe, make sure there's no open doors or things like that for our students about arrive on campus about seven and start checking doors, making sure things are safe and, and secure for our kids. Start greeting our students. And then every day is different. You know, being a police officer these days, especially in school safety, you don't know what you're going to get into until, you know, that day comes. Um, it could be from dealing with narcotics cases. It could be dealing with a student mental health crisis. It could be working a traffic accident in the parking lot. It could be from helping a person retrieve a lost cell phone. So there's no typical day that we have in law enforcement. Every day is different. But a lot of things we do is planning, making sure things are safe and secure, walking our buildings and building those community relationships with our kids. You know, you have to the kids have to be able to trust you when things are happening on campus and, and having those personal relationships makes things amazing where the kids will trust you and, and bring the tips and things like that to you. Really cool. Who was um, one of your mentors um, in this, in law enforcement? I've had a lot of great mentors. Mm -hmm. um, it started off really with some people in my college internship at Holland Park DPS. And they really helped push me to the first level uh, to go get my, my uh, degrees and make sure I go get my, the best training and things like that. And from there, I had a lot of police chief mentors who really helped me get my feet on the ground, being a police chief, 
that first year being a police chief, I was wandering around aimlessly, not knowing how to be a police chief. I knew the title. I knew it was a dream. But I really didn't know what I was doing until about two or three years into my career. So people like Alan Bragg, David Kimberly, um, you know, there's a lot of people in, in law enforcement and school-based policing right now that are, are a lot of godfathers of that to really get your career started and, and help you become the, the not the lost sheep. That's really awesome. I think it's also encouraging, you know, even as chief your first year, you, you still had so much to learn and you there's did, a lot you know, to learn. I think sometimes it can be intimidating, even going into an internship, feeling like you need to know certain things, know how to do certain things, but you know, um, sometimes you just have to ask questions and, and be willing and open to learn. So I think that's encouraging to hear. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. What aspects um, of your role do you like um, and which aspects do you not like as much? So I'm going to go with the negative part first. What right now, you know, with everything that's happening in Uvalde from last last month, school policing is taking a huge huge hit on on the trust of the community. Yes, there was some missteps in that that incident, and only time will tell how that plays out. However, there's still a lot of good school based law enforcement officers out there. So that's the downfall about having one job, whether it be this Uvalde incident or other things. You're always going to have the doubt of the community of what they could have done better. On the flip side of that, having your community relationships and being involved in your community where the community knows you on a first name basis, they trust you and things of that nature will make things a lot easier for when you have an incident, they can call you. So we did a uh, feedback just last week with a survey to our community of what we're doing. And instead of giving generic Facebook responses on a platform, they got a number and called each parent that had a question or concern and made it more personal. They're not getting a generic canned response from a communications team. They're getting an actual phone call from the police chief to reassure them. We've had a lot of people call with concerns and in, in, in making it more personable, you, you have better buy-in with the community. In law enforcement, we just got back from the defund the police movement. A lot of different agencies lost funding and things like that with Without having that personal connection to your community and being involved in your community, you're you're not going to have the support. So I, I believe in community policing. I believe in community support and pushing things to the next level. That's wonderful insight. Yeah, and I think that personal you know connection is yeah um, that makes a lot. Got to have that. And, um, yeah. Um, all right. Um, and sort of going back to the academic side of it, um, in terms of, you know, we talked about major, um, are there any specific classes, um, or courses or other additional trainings that you recommend students take? Yes. So criminal justice is a catch all for everybody and it's a great program to do, but I would also look into a couple of other things. Uh, one of three that I would think of public administration, a lot of police chiefs who uh, can't do the job anymore because they're just, you know, this job takes a toll on your body from carrying the gear. They become great city managers. So to understand how the city process works, the county process works, I would look at a public administration as a minor. Another thing I would look into is emergency management. That's a very hot field right now. And with planning and events and things of that nature, that is a huge role to be able to do. The last one is, is probably not going to be a popular one, but I'm going to spit it out anyway. And that's a communications minor because the amount of press releases, social media interactions and things like that, it will tell you how to work with media and how to promote your department. We really got to have that positive policing outside. So we do a lot of social media posts, Facebook posts, Twitter posts, but how to communicate and get out into your community. So that, those are the three that I would say would blend well with the criminal justice degree. There's a lot of other things, but but those are three strong ones that I would I would be contenders. And as far as I know, all three of those are offered at University of North Texas. I believe that is correct. Yeah, those that, that absolutely makes sense. The public affairs and communications, um, you know, you wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily immediately think of those, but yeah, you explaining them absolutely. I think those would be critical. Uh, at least taking a few classes in those areas, if not minor, in fact. It's really awesome. Um, 
I feel like we covered the next one, um, but um, how relevant is your undergraduate major criminal justice to your work? That is huge. So, you know, being a baby cop, when I got out of college, I thought I knew the world because I, I got this degree, I got these, this police officer certification, but it is vital. I mean, you learn a lot of different things and having your undergraduate degree will really help expand your knowledge to give you the best tools that you can in order to, um, to make the best choices. You know, case law, we, we look at case law and how to be able to do our jobs as police officers. Well, that's talked about in some of your classes, how to search and seize, how to, you know, not violate people's rights. Even the communications piece, a good social media class is great to protect you and your agency and uh, to make your agency stronger, more visible in the community. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. All right, next question. Um, what advice would you give a student, a UNT student who is considering um, a career in law enforcement? So the biggest thing I would tell them is to, to study what they want to do, research what they want to do, and then take classes based off that. So a lot, like at Sam Houston State, they had two different paths. They had a, a police department path and they had a corrections path. Find out what you want to do and then take classes that will specialize to take you down that path. You know, especially if you're looking at a lot of people want to go federal or state, see what those job requirements are and what their preferred um, uh, preferred hiring qualifications are, and take your degree plan based off that. A lot of them want you to have a second language or some kind of communications, you know, leadership. Take those classes that fit down that path that you want to go. So if you're looking for a patrol, or maybe even a detective, take the blood stain pass. You know, take take some of these advanced classes that will help you further and make you stand out versus just a regular candidate that has a degree. Fantastic. Um, and what about a student um, who is interested in pursuing an internship, um, try to figure out if this is a career path that would be a good fit for them? Do you have any advice for them? Um, so the internship program is something I've been a part of for the past eight years and has been a wonderful tool for me um, to help grow a lot of young leaders um, in our department in Aubrey I've, I've excuse me in Aubrey I had emergency management interns and uh, this past year I took them with me to Argyle to my new agency and as we look at that it gives them an opportunity to open the window and open the door to see what different things are um, we go through a full interview process they go through a full background process and we give them the opportunity to learn about what it would be like in a school. And a lot of times people don't think, but a school is a small city within a little area. If you think about it, we have approximately 45 to 5,000 kids, 4,500 to 5,000 kids each day that come to our cities in our little metropolis. And we work with those kids every day. So we have to plan. We have a city government. We have a superintendent that's like the mayor. We have uh, principals. They're like the... Uh, HOA presidents and things like that. And so we have a full little seat. So this gives you an opportunity to go test to see if this job is right for you, if you like it. And if you don't, that's okay. You, you didn't waste your time. You can find out the next job that you'd like and, and work in a different internship that'll help you be more successful. And I'd rather you find out now in a two or three month span versus 20 years down the road, man, I wish I would have known that and you're, you're caught in that job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how many interns um, did you take in most recently? So I usually try to take a minimum of two, no more than three each semester. And that way everybody has a fair shot because I do want, uh, you know, UNT has been a great program to have interns with. And I want to be able to help every intern that I can. Um, what's the best part about this, this intern project is usually I'll have seven to eight interns apply. And of those seven to eight, I'll be able to take two, possibly three, depending on the schedule. So it's it's nice that to have to have an internship where everybody wants to come to you because it's a it's a reputable internship. And how can an eagle apply to this internship? So you can reach me at Scott 
dot collins at argyleisd.com or contact dr timmons at the university of north texas emergency management division and he can point you my contact information and i'd love to have some more interns uh, every intern is a great experience they bring a wide variety of talent they bring a wide variety of skills and i like the opportunity to be able to work with them on on the different options that we get to do Wonderful. Um, yeah, was there anything? I think that was my last question. Was there anything you wanted to talk about today that you didn't get a chance to? I can't express enough of how important it is for education and training. I can't express how much it means for you to go get the training that's specializing your job, but don't just stop at the bare minimum. Always train, learn something every day. Um, when you become passionate about something, um, keep going after that. I was never supposed to be in school safety. School safety was kind of an accident for me. I was working in a uh, constable's office in Magnolia, Texas. And in order to get to patrol operations, we had to do our time in the school setting. And I became really good at school safety. And from there, uh, my career path just kind of purchased on and grew on into working as a chief of police. So with that, I become an expert at school safety and just, just learn your job, become passionate about it, enjoy it, you know, learn everything you can learn. Emergency management was not supposed to be my, my full-time gig right now. However, eight years ago when I became a police chief, that, that stepped up into a fast soon role that I was not prepared for. And from there, I've really worked hard on my educational aspects to be able to make the best of every emergency management decision. Um, just a little bit about some of the emergency management decisions you get to make. I got to work at the largest COVID vaccination site and run incident command uh, in, during a, a pandemic. How many people can say they've done that because of your experience? Not many people can. Um, how many people have led uh, high school graduations at Texas Motor Speedway for a pandemic for not one district, but for 22 districts? So, so a whole bunch of kids could graduate and walk across the stage in a pandemic. It's things like that that we learn and we take pride in. So those are some of the accomplishments that my career has taken me through. And I've only been able to do that because I've studied and worked hard and became an expert at, at school safety. So don't ever stop learning. Don't ever stop going to training. You may not want to get your master's degree right here, right now, and you may not even need it. But after you get your degree, take a couple of years off, go get the job, and then go back and go get it. I wish 20 years ago, when I was working in school, that internet school would be the same as what it is today. I could have got my degree a long time ago. It would have been a great experience. Um, right now, I'm working a full-time police chief job while I'm going to school at night. Um, it's a little stressful being a family and a father and everything else, but the education is there. And I'm going to accomplish my goal in June, I'm sorry, December of 2022 and walk across that stage. So don't ever stop shy of your dreams. Don't ever stop short of yourself and believe in yourself and never stop working towards being the best version of you that you can be. Wow, what a wonderful way um, to end this interview. Thank you so much, Chief Collins, for sharing all your wonderful advice and insight. I know this is going to be super encouraging to all the Eagles out there, uh, especially those who are pursuing degrees of criminal justice, um, maybe emergency management, and are interested in pursuing um, you know, a career in law enforcement. And I wholeheartedly agree um, that um, learning and continuing to learn um, during and after school is so important. So thank you so much. Anything for I can do for your Eagles, please don't ever hesitate to come reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you, whether you're a criminal justice student or emergency management student. There's something I can do to help you. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so much for what you do um, to keep us safe. And I will put, uh, if it's okay with you, Chief Collins, I will put um, your information um, on how you can learn more about the internship program in the comments section of um, this video once it's posted. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you.